Fly me to the moon and let me play amongst the stars. Show me what a spray I'm one of the lucky ones. I got a job right out of college working for App App, an app management application. I'm a consumer solutions partner dealing directly with our community members. Welcome to live chat. How can I help you? Uh, I can't get Snapchat and Venmo to search on your app. <laughs> Have you tried removing and re-adding the apps in the Add Apps to App App screen? <laughs> what? <laughs> Telecommuting has its advantages. I work wherever I want and I set my own hours. No cubicles or co-workers. It's ideal for an introvert like me. Jimbo! Large hazelnut oat milk no foam skim latte. Last call, man. I'm not gonna say that again. In a way, it's like I'm my own boss. Please be true. I used to work from my apartment. But recently, I started renting it out as an Airbnb. <clears throat> the, the extra income helps me pay my rent and keeps me in lavender vanilla lattes. When she passes, each one she passes goes. I've been staying on a friend of a friend's couch. Usually, I don't hang around during the day to give her some space, but I think today will have to be an exception. When I arrived, she wasn't home. I saw she posted on Twitter that she was boarding a flight to Beijing. She must have told me, and I'd forgotten. Hi, we're the Airbnb guests. I decided to go visit my parents until my apartment was free again. <laughs> my parents and I haven't spoken for a while. But we have a good relationship. Hey, let a turn signal jag off. <laughs> They're halfway through season four of Mad Men. I know because I'm on their Netflix account. <laughs> I guess the last driver neglected to refill the tank. Some people really shouldn't participate in the sharing economy. I tried to call for an Uber but there were no drivers around. I even tried Lyft. No dice. My instinct was to walk down the road to a gas station, but Waze directed me to a shortcut through the forest, so I did that instead. With the help of Wikipedia to identify edible plants and YouTube to set traps, I was able to live off the land. <laughs> I lost my job, my second week in the wilderness. Not because I hadn't been logging hours. App App really encourages work-life balance, but because my division was replaced by AI software. <laughs> I'm glad I joined Google Fi. <laughs> I bet AT&T doesn't get covered like this. <laughs> Finally, I emerged from the forest onto my parents' lawn. I rang the doorbell several times, but there was no answer. <laughs> my parents were home, but they didn't recognize me and refused to answer the door. <laughs> I began to feel faint. Had I come all this way for nothing? I had no job, no real friends, an apartment I barely lived in. Was this really my life? Was I destined to be an interchangeable cog in the global corporate machine, picked up and discarded on a whim, my identity determined by Facebook algorithms? Detox from the Apple App Store and pay five dollars for someone else to have it for me. <laughs> then I called an Uber.
Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all the worship and the doors. Turn it up. not the agreement. Okay. Okay. Good luck! Yeah. 
Fly me to the moon and let me play amongst the stars. Show me what a spring is like on a Jupiter and Mars. Trains arrive. Please step back from the platform edge. I can't believe I missed the goddamn last train. Now arriving at platform 257C, Future Incorporated. Weekend. Did you ever go to that lake? Oh, we were. No. No, the uncle was like, oh my gosh, you both were. Was it poisonous? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in like breathing, you couldn't take the helmet off at all. Don't, no, don't eat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess they're all like that now, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, that's what I'm how are you? <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? Can you name the blocks? How about just the pyramid? No? Can you show me which is the pyramid? <laughs> All right, class, today we'll be going over re-entry from low atmospheric orbit. Uh, who can tell me what the p-value of this equation is? Anyone? Anyone at all? Hey, hey, all right, all right. Eyes forward, class, come on. You know what to do. Measuring up. With more time. No, 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 no. That's simply not possible. It doesn't do to get too attached. Remember that. Yeah, so you may as well go home. Uh, no use wasting the day. We'll get you a new unit tomorrow. Today's weather report. Light acid showers continuing throughout the afternoon, so do strap on that helmet while you're waiting for the train, ladies. Uh, helmet compliance has been at 80% as of last measurement. Uh, on to business matters. According to recent reports from the accounting department, quarterly earnings are up 0.7%, which is far short of our expected gains for this quarter. All it'll take is a little bit more elbow grease and positive attitudes, ladies. So keep your chins up and your eyes smiling, and uh... 
We'll beat that record in no time. You'll see. And remember, you can't spell Future Incorporated without... children, swaddled in corporate deceit, living in a bubble, population control, genetic engineering, how can there be a God without death? pleasures of a simple life, filled with purpose and direction. She'll change her mind, you'll see. I had a dream last night, Ed. I was in a river wading upstream. The current was so strong. And just as my feet began to slip, I heard him call my name. It woke me right up. Eh? Get a load of this guy. <laughs> a skeleton hauling trash. <laughs> uh, now I've seen everything or most things. <laughs> Is this a first generation model? Can you fix her? I don't even know where I'd find the parts. Um, how about a trade-in? Uh, I can get you a newer model. I don't want a newer model! Oh. Okay. Uh, I'll make some calls to like a history museum or something. <laughs> David? Edna? It is you. You look exactly the same. Is that a good thing? No, it is. So, how have you been? How's James? 
You don't really want to know about James. You're right, I don't. <laughs> How is your work? Good. Very good. I'm almost done. Really? Yeah. That's wonderful, David. You should come see it sometime. I'd love to, but I really don't think that's right for either of us. Oh. oh. You know, forget I asked. I'm just swamped right now. Sure you are. We have a little girl. Yeah. Our number came up. That's wonderful, Edna. I've got to get going. David. Take care. And if you're traveling in that North Country fair, where the winds hit hay on the borderline, remember me to one who is there, for she once was a true love mine. And if you go when the snowflakes storm, where the rivers freeze in summer ends, Here I am.
Good morning, brother. Good morning, brother. Good morning, Good morning beloved. beloved. Good morning, neighbor. Good morning, neighbor. chest was on fire. <laughs>
פעם Father Where's mom? Where is she?
that we're here. Huh? <clears throat> Do you think that she knows who we are? What? No. It's just some dumb space slug. I think she's sad. And lonely. Enough. Go to sleep. Do you think she would miss me if I left? We'll never find out. I guess. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> Morning feelings report. Carla hates me! She didn't say it, but the guy can tell. <laughs> well, I've barely seen Joe this whole week. I think he's been avoiding me. I guess I shouldn't have yelled at him. But also, Rick is an asshole! <laughs> and report. Where do you think garbage goes? 
You don't think this is all there is, do you? Oh, geez, Joe, don't you know anything?
you have just watched The Future Without You, an adaptation of short comics by Sophie Goldstein, uh, by and with Carl Antonovitz. Antonowitz or Antonowitz? Take your pick. Antonowitz. Antonowitz. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Um, and uh, this is a kind of a, a, a new and interesting wave of comics adaptations uh, into plays with music, multimedia. It's, um, it's, an, inter it's an interesting thing. And uh, I'd like to, we're going to do a, a short Q&A sort of talking about this work. And um, I'll begin with Carl. Uh, what was the in idea and inspiration to turn Sophie's short comics into uh, a work like this? Well, I've always really, I have a very theatrical side to me. I did theater when I was in high school and I did like live performance poetry and stuff when I was in college. Um, and then I jumped into doing comics after that. And this was a way to sort of combine those two, those two interests. Um, I had done a large, a large scale performance piece called Where's Kiss uh, a couple of years ago with the New Hazlet Theater in Pittsburgh. Uh, and this was, I mean, the next, <laughs> the next big project of that type that I decided to tackle. The, like the, the last piece in this uh, collection, uh, Mothership Blues was actually the first performance comics piece that I had ever done. And Sophie and I did that for Mice seven or eight years ago. Yeah, and just to tag on to that, um, we so we've been doing comics readings, like your more typical, less produced reading for a while. And <laughs> we would have these experiences where we'd be reading my comic and then uh, we would do it and then people would come up to the table and we'd be standing next to each other, like we're we're married. We've been tabling together for years and years. Um, and they and they would go to Carl. And they'd be like, "You were amazing." <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was just like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is. He's a really good performer and very gifted. And I think that there was like there was a response that people had to his performance that um, that made it seem almost like like why why aren't you doing more of this? Like people really respond to Carl as a performer. And so when he did Where's Kiss, it was kind of like a natural progression of that was his his own comics that he was directing and acting and everything. Um, and so I'm in this fellowship. Uh, so, you know, you doing using my comics in combination with Carl's directing uh, worked out really beautifully. Beyond simply um, contributing your own work, Sophie, uh, how collaborative was this process? Uh, what kind of input did you have on the, the production itself? I mean, initially not a ton because um, at the time the rehearsals were starting, uh, Carl, Carl was doing rehearsals with our cast and I was finishing An Embarrassment of Witches and I was like under a really tight deadline. So, you know, I just trusted Carl to like take it to a certain development point and then, and then I turned in the book and I was able to actually like come to some of the rehearsals and I gave some feedback at that point about just kind of like more minor stuff about inflections you know things that I'm sure actors love to hear feedback about <laughs> but um and I had some like ideas for some stage business and stuff like that but the production was already like I at that point I was just kind of like fine tuning little bits and pieces, the whole, the overall, the staging and that sort of stuff had already been determined by Carl in conjunction with the actors, right? Yeah, it was definitely a, there's a real back and forth. The way that I like to work these is that there's a back and forth between me as the director and the other actors. So I'm not just like telling them, hey, go stand over there right now because I need you to stand over there right now. It's sort of, uh, because the, the performance is so structured based on the, because it's like cued off of these projections, I want to allow them to have a little bit more creative input than you might normally expect otherwise. But it's also really tightly coordinated because of the sound effects. No, oh, yeah. You know, he had to like figure out where people, because they're the sound effects are on stable locations and people are moving around between the locations. So it's actually like some pretty complex choreography. And now that was like had to be figured out. Carl also like did all this sound design, which is like a very considerable part of the whole experience. 
Well, and actually that leads to my next question is that uh, this is not just here's some comics projected and here's some people reading. It's really, it's, it seems clear that you, you try to make your best to make it a completely immersive experience for your, your audience. And sound in particular seemed to be a big aspect of that. And uh, a sound in particular was often used to heighten emotion and create dissonant effects uh, in certain points. Uh, what was your philosophy behind that sort of uh, introduction of sound as more than just a tool, but like a, an important part of the toolkit of the total experience for the audience? Um, I think the way that I thought about it is that it could be used as either a bludgeon or as a scalpel when, <laughs> depending on what, the, depending on what the, the scene necessitated. Like there's that part in uh, Coyote where the, the, the screech of the spheres is, is like pushed all the way up and it's like when you hear it in person, it can be like, it's, it's really aggressive, it's almost deafening. Um, and then like it cuts it cuts right out every time because like that that heightens your tension to a certain point and then like you're sort of left there after it's cut feeling like the ground's been pulled out from underneath you so i wanted to create a sense of um like i guess some something like oppression something some sort of like uh like intimidation through, the, through that particular part and then have that be immediately removed when we go back into the sphere or go back into safety um, to sort of get this, what is the word? I wanted to use Jabberwocky, that's not the right word. I have no idea. I, I will add on though that- Whiplash. I, whiplash. Sort of a whiplash effect between those two states. In, a, in some of the earlier readings that we did, um, we played around like in, in uh, Betsy, there's some added dialogue that's not on the page, um, just like voiceover recordings and things like that. And um, when we were just doing readings with just the two of us, this was stuff that like we came up with together. And it's a really like fun to add those extra layers and kind of do more world building through that. Um, and then I think when we were doing Mothership Blues was the first time when we had that Carl designed the ambient sound of the spaceship that drops out when Joe leaves the ship and it just create like you get, you know, you get used to the, that sound of the ship. So you really notice when it's gone. And I just thought like that was really effective. And I just, it just adds like, yeah, it really adds the, you can like create a lot of emphasis with sound. Um, and with the absence thereof. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in there just another tool and to, in the toolbox. How intriguing is that was that for you to use, given that you work in comics in a medium that doesn't use sound, that doesn't have moving images? Um, what was that translation like for you in sort of thinking it through? You did the sound design. You That's did. true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Sophie uses, uh, in, on her pages, she uses onomatopoeias. So a lot of the time there'll be like a, a definite sort of like click, click kind of noise that you know needs to happen. And by use of the images that are on the page, I could sort of figure that out and do a rough approximation with what I know how to do. Like there's a part with um, like a vacuum cleaner in Mothership Blues. Like uh, our act one, of our actor one of our actors, Kara, uh, brought her dust devil from home and used that to simulate the sound of the air leaving the airlock, um, which worked out super well. Um, but I think in the, uh, in the comic, it's just shh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then also, uh, there, I mean, there's like, when Carl did Where's Kiss, so his story is like set in a more natural environment. So there's a lot of like, you know, crunching of feet on leaves and wind and things like that. So Bricks it's really, falling over, that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's just, it's really interesting to see like how different, like it's it's all comics, but like it was just completely different to do it in my, the environments I create, which are mostly like- Synthetic. Yeah, like synthetic trash heaps, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was able to use some of the same sound effects from Where's Kiss. Like I think some of the like leaves that uh, crunch in the future is a nice place are leaves from Where's Kiss. We have so much trash in our apartment. It's not trash, they're tools. <laughs> it's just, you're just like weird bags of like leaves. This is Carl's <laughs> favorite pile of sticks. <laughs> this piece of metal he likes banging. <laughs> like, it's, it's part of a trash it's can. It's virtually part of a indistinguishable from trash. <laughs> it would be trash on the other hands. Yes. <laughs> It is delightful that you have a favorite pile of sticks and find <laughs> more than one. Well, um, you stick in half, and then you get two sticks. <laughs> then that one goes in half. Yeah, then, get, then you get four sticks. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I'm interested in is uh, the uh, what the, the actors bring to the table. And as a director, Carl, what were you hoping to see from them? And what sort of, uh, what's, what sort of surprises and things that you liked uh, did in this particular performance or were particularly notable for you that the, uh, the actors brought out of the comics? And for Sophie, related to that is, uh, what was it like to see your characters who were in, in your head suddenly brought to life and interpreted by someone else in a different way? Um, the actors really, they change a lot of things. Like there's, there's ways that I hear, like when I read one of Sophie's comics or anybody's comics, I hear them read in a particular way. I hear like a particular cadence done with, in each sentence, I hear uh, particular intonations. Uh, but everybody, when they, when they come to a comic, they bring whatever their own background with speech is to it. Um, so they, like the way that you hear a line in your head is going to be different from the way that I hear a line in my head and hearing somebody else do those, like sort of, it opens up different possibilities. So like, Kara would have read a line, da 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 da, as opposed to da 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 da. Was there a particular moment that stood out to you? I can't think of anything right now, but. Well, while you're thinking about that, I will say that like, my ex my experience of coming into these rehearsals after they had like already gotten to a certain point is like I I was used with a few of these comics we performed them a number of times with just me and Carl and so um so the actors would be reading parts that Carl would previously read and I would have to fight the urge to be to, to be like no that's not what they sound like they sound like when Carl's reading that character um and so so that was oh, like, like Okay, go ahead. Um, like, so there, there are a couple of things like that where I just like, the, to me, like the way Carl read the characters have become how they sounded in my head, even though <laughs> I originally made the comic. Um, but I think that, you know, like with, um, with uh, Matt's character. In Mothership Blues. Mothership Blues. I think that uh, he did really wonderful things with, uh, with that character and like even took it a little bit further and made him even more nebbishy. <laughs> yeah, Javier made Matt so gross. Uh, and like, I, I was, I held back from that when I was performing him. Uh, but like, he really gave, gave a lot of life to that character that I just wasn't confident enough to be able to bring to him when I was performing him. Yeah, and I think just having experienced um, actors like I, um, you know, because I was the person available, I was often the, the, the person doing the voices when we would read together, but I am not a natural performer. So uh, having Kara do, having like, I mean, having Javier do it for me wasn't a, cause I was used to Carl doing a lot of the male voices. So having been having Kara in there and hearing someone who actually knows how to act doing it, was just like, ah, sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm afraid we've about reached our time. Uh, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you so much for sharing this work. And um, I'm hoping that uh, when SPX comes around for real again, uh, we'll have the opportunity maybe to do a live performance, which would be very exciting. That would be great. I would love that. Um, for Thank you for watching. Uh, this is the last uh, panel of the evening for Saturday. Um, please come back later to watch the Ignatz Awards, uh, which will be partly live and partly pre-recorded. Um, and look below in the links um, 
for links to uh, Sophie's books and Carl's comics. Um, we're using um, uh, bookshop.org as an uh, alternative to amazon.com. Uh, and also we're just gonna directly link to people's shops. So thank you so much for everyone. Thank you both of you for, um, for answering these questions and talking about this work. And uh, thank you for everyone for watching. Good night. Thank you. Thanks.